I came in, so many other people was handling my business and doing all this stuff. So literally when I came out independent, bro, I did not know how to function as a normal person. Mm. Meaning like, like how normal people do stuff. I wasn't going to Target. I wasn't going to stuff. I wasn't going out to do like everything was with my team, with my people. Like it was already in a, in a celebrity style environment and or environment in which I would be prioritized. You see what I'm saying? So again, that's the ego flair. That's the relationship that I have with that, that I know that's going to boost my ego. That's going to make me feel worthy. And I'm attached myself to these experiences. So my thing is, for me, I had to learn, like, who are you outside of these experiences? Who are you if you ain't traveling for six months? Huh? Mm. Who are mm-hmm. you then? Do you feel as confident? Do you feel as strong? Do you feel as, as capable? You see what I'm saying? Do you feel like you, you, you worthy? And, and for me, like, that's why I struggled, because I didn't feel worthy in those moments. You see what I'm saying? That's why I struggled. And that's when I knew like something was wrong and that this game had a real hold of me. You see what I'm saying? Because my identity had been clogged up into this. You see me? Because, you know, we're talking about me getting a deal, homie, at like 18, homie. Like, mm. I wasn't a man yet. I learned how to be ace hood before anything. Mm. For real, for real. My pops went around. So, you know, put on the swag, put the da-da-da, do my thing, travel the world, like get the money. Like, yeah, it's all great. But the moment I had to sit with self and sit in silence and disconnect myself from these things, it was the it was the most terrifying thing I ever had to do. Yo, what's poppin'? You know what time it is? Your boy, Mr. J Hill, J Hill Podcast. We in the building. Hey. Another special guest is here. When I say special, man, sheesh, this is probably one of my favorite guests so far. Because, like, coming from where I'm com- coming from, like, we don't really get these opportunities like this, right? And the fact that I could sit down. We did an interview in the middle of the pandemic on Instagram Live. And the fact that I could sit down with this guy face-to-face, man-to-man, and have a conversation to just show the level of growth of the platform of myself, from my city, you feel me? Like, you know, if you're from Baltimore, you know how we rock, man. And I was a big fan and still am a big fan of this guy outside of the music. I mean, talking about growth, man. This guy came from dropping out favorite hits, Bugatti. Like, I mean, like, shit, like, it's so many songs that I can't even, I don't even want to try to do it and, and forget. You feel me? I ain't even want to slaughter it. Mr. Ace Hood is in a building. What up, dog? What Yo, up, make some boy? noise, my nigga Ace Hood. You feel me? <laughs> like, we here. You feel me? Yes, sir. Yes, Yo, sir. like, what's up, bro? What's up, my brother? Yo, I don't even know where to yes, start sir. because, like, this is one of them things that I ain't even have to, like, study for. Like, it, you know they say, like, some of your best conversations be just people you fans of. Yeah. And, like, you definitely, like, was one of the people that, like, <sighs> that had the, the hip-hop game on lock, on smash. And I'm not going to lie, just thinking about that, I know where I come from and I know the platform I hold now, but I didn't always have this platform, right? Mm-hmm. So like the, the little boy in me, pause, the kid in me, it, uh, when I go back and listen to your catalog, because you got so much music out now, still what people don't know, they should know, I kind of like feel bad in the sense of you deserve way more. Do you... Do you understand what I'm saying? Do you feel like that sometimes? I understand what you're saying. I think um, uh, I think it depends on what lens you look through through that. You know what I'm saying? That's true. Uh, in terms of um, what does more entail? You see what I'm mm. saying? Like what does more look like? You dig what I'm saying? So um, could could I always be pro- more progressive? Could I uh, do things differently? Yeah. Um, but I don't know, man. I think it's important that we uh, give ourselves credit along the journey for what we have done, you see what I'm saying, and for what we have created. Um, but I think, you know what I'm saying, I think the story is, uh, you know, the story, we're still telling the story, you know what I'm right. saying? So I don't, I, don't, I, don't go, I don't go to sleep feeling lack of, if that makes sense, you know mm-hmm. what I'm saying? I don't feel any lack. I feel uh, I'm always accountable with things. I'm always like, if something isn't, it's because maybe I am not. You see what I'm saying? So if I want more of anything, I know to become it. Does that mm. make sense? Yeah, 100%. Um, so that's how I look at it, man. I know that like that the story is, there's still more to the story left to be told, right? There's still more work to be done, right? There's still things that I can do better, that I can be greater at. You see what I'm saying? Um, and uh, we in the process of doing those things too. And I mean, that, that, that answer is definitely, 
understood because of who you are. Like always somebody that's looking within and trying to be better. Mm -hmm. Like, I mean, it's all over who just the person that you are when it comes to working out, when it comes to family, how family oriented you is, when it comes to the music, the the quality of music you make. But I guess from a fan, this is my way of like giving you your flowers. Cause I feel like you were so ahead of your time mm -hmm. that we wasn't even prepared for it. Mm -hmm. And when I think of that and I think of the legends that we have, like we have other artists that came out around your time who still are like, they get the roses and the respect they deserve. And when I look at somebody like you, that almost, I mean, paved the way for so many of the artists that we listen to now. I'm sorry, bro. I look at it like, nah, bro. Like, he deserved to be on, on, on that pedestal just like the other ones. Yeah. But also, too, keep in mind, like, <clears throat> you know, I didn't, I didn't follow typical protocol. So my journey is different. Meaning that I didn't follow after, per se, what my peers were doing. You know what I'm saying? Like, for a while I was, right? Uh... But for me, I told a different trajectory in my life. I think uh, to take matters into my own hand, I think the, the, the portion of going independent. So I think things for me look different. Mm. You know what I'm saying? That's, that's, that's what I would say. Uh, yeah, I would just say they look different, dog. But I, I, do, I do appreciate that. And I do hear what you're saying in terms of the flowers, 1,000%. Uh, and I know my fans are like, bro, you deserve more. You deserve for sure. Um, but also, man, I know like, it ain't like those things have passed me by. You understand mm. what I'm saying? So it's like, uh, yeah, that, that's how I feel. There's nothing that, I've, that I missed is what I feel like. You see what I'm saying? Um, in terms of an acc accolade thing, you know what I mean? Amongst my peers or certain things, it's like, all right, true, certain awards and stuff like that. You know what I'm saying? That I might have wanted to be a part of but didn't be a part of. Um, you know, I take, it, I take it on the chin, man, as, as I go. You know what I'm saying? Mm. Um, but I just think my journey looks different, so I just think the story is different. So when we talk about the the industry, not independently, right, but I guess the the majors, right, when we talk about the corporations and things like that, and you look at who you are as a person, who you were as an artist, do you feel like, or sometimes do you feel like, man, that's not even my space to belong in. Like, I don't belong in this space. I don't belong here. What do you mean? Like, I know, for example, sometimes, like, working in, in this space, I... I look at myself and be like, bro, like, I'm not these other media outlets. I'm not these other, like, journalists. You get what I'm saying? Like, I stand for something more. And sometimes when we in, when we're stuck in this, the environment that we're in, meaning the music industry, sometimes we got to confine to their, to their rules. Or sometimes we feel like we got to confine to their rules when that's not necessarily true. Right. But even though it's not true, it means your process is going to be a little bit harder. Right. Sometimes a lot more harder. Right. And I'm wondering, like, coming from somebody like yourself, do you ever look at it like, man, I'm just here to get paid? I'm, what what uh, they say? I'm just here so I don't get fired. So I don't get fired. <laughs> like, type shit. Like, I wonder, like, do you feel like that? Or, or it's like, bro, like, nah, I'm fulfilling my purpose type vibe. Like, I'm just yeah, curious. I'm fulfilling my purpose, you know? Uh, for me, it was about legacy, dog, but I'm fulfilling my purpose, you know what I'm saying? Uh, and what matters to me, because I want to be of service to the world. I want to have a mark on the world and the things that I do. And, uh, I've been able to do that and create that in, in a hip hop space. Mm. You see what I'm saying? But there's other things outside of hip hop um, that I believe in. You know, the journey that I'm on is no different. It's a human journey. You see what I'm saying? Mm. It's a human experience. So regardless of whatever field you're in, you still got to deal with these things emotionally, mentally, physically, spiritually. Like you still got to go through the same journey. It just looked different for everybody else. Uh, I just think for me, I just became more intentional about my journey and my path as opposed to allowing the industry or people, a group of people to guide me in a way that's not most authentic to who I am, but take the reins in my own hand and say, you know what, if they making this and they doing that or not even that, it's just having understanding about my business. It's just knowing what's going on, learning the language, you know what I'm saying? Because oftentimes people are not developing artists, you know what I'm saying? Meaning like developing, this is what the language means in these contracts. What are we talking about? This is what splits. This is how they work. What are you receiving? Like, labels are not doing that. Oftentimes, for us, we just thinking about the big picture of like, I want to take care of mama, I want to take care of pops, I want to take care of the crib, whatever, you know what I'm saying? And then you want the big check. So you oftentimes, you don't know, you know what I'm mm -hmm. saying? So for me, uh, that's really what it was, man. It was like, all right, trip. we're going to take this power back, dog. We're going to navigate differently. But I also understood the, the, the back end of it of like, you know, this is going to be much harder than that journey, right? Mm, mm, you know what mm. I'm saying? Like, like you, you, you know, like in order to have what you want, you're going to have to become something different, which means that I couldn't be who I was and become this. You dig what I'm saying? So I knew that at that particular point, once I became independent, it was like really being independent of like, oh, no, 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 we got to re- we got to reinvent ourselves entirely because y'all know what I was. You know what I came from. 
But let me show you who I really am and what I am now. You see what mm. I'm saying? Yo, we, we, we talk about the contracts and things like that, right? And I've been having this conversation a lot lately. And it's so easy. Sometimes I feel like it's so easy for us to, to look at the right now and ignore like what got us here. And what I mean by that is like, so we all know that you had a contract situation and that was tough for you. Mm -hmm. However, we can't ignore the platform that that put you on yes. and the head start that it gave you. Yes. Right. So like I, I always hear artists say, like we talk about this contract stuff and I think I seen some, I don't know if it was Young Thug, but it was like, yo, your first contract is always your worst. But your first contract might not be for the money. It might just be for the exposure. Mm -hmm. And I was wondering, do you think that sometimes our, our knowledge of the game, our knowledge of whatever it is that we're doing can be the very thing that holds us back? Because some, sometimes like ignorance is bliss, mm -hmm. right? So like some opportunities that you took then, you probably wouldn't take now, but some of those opportunities is the same opportunities that propels you far in your career. Right. It's like now somebody come to you like, yo, I got this, this opportunity for you to get some exposure, you're like, man, I'm not, I don't need no exposure. Right, I need right. a bag. Right. But back then, mm -hmm. you would jump for that exposure, and that exposure got it got you into some doors that you probably never thought you would have seen. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Well, that's the difference, right? So that is very true. What you're saying is that uh, when you had having that system, there were so many benefits for me, right? Uh, for one, you had a team, an entire team of people that's coming in working for you. Everybody has a specific job, so that's less lowered for you as an artist, as a businessman. All you get to focus on is the creativity part of it, uh, which I appreciate. And I do think that, like, yeah, there have been moments in my life where, like, uh, having the information maybe have kept me out of those certain spaces, 1,000%. <laughs> but this is one of the things that I had to learn on the independent journey mm -hmm. in terms of living in the decisions that you make and owning your decisions. So for me, it was a part of that type of hard learning and that hard truth of like, oh, damn, as much as I felt like I needed to create something new in in in, in some way, in, in this um, like, you know, separate myself in some way from the industry to kind of do something differently because I was, you know, the whole major label idea. I wanted to create a self-identity for myself, but still understanding now that like, what I recognize now is that you need to integrate all those things and all those things need to come into balance, which means that like, there's so many things in the industry that I benefit off of that even now that I have a better relationship with now, now that like after going without it, if that makes sense, mm. you see what I'm saying? So like, uh, going back now into those same spaces, now I'm different. Now I have a different set of knowledge of knowing like, uh, why this is why I'm in this space. This is why this is this is why this thing is important to do. Give me an Does example. Does that make a sense? So let's say a real life example that you actually a real life from. example. Let's say in like, the industry, music, uh, no names, no specific, but just for us to release. If we, if your fans could see your career, we see the change and we see how it affected. Right. You. Right. So I would say, you would say, give an example of what exactly? Of, of something that changed and, 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 and we would probably were able to see the change, but we didn't understand where it came from. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. That you wouldn't see the change, you wouldn't know where it came from. Um, so let's even talk about being vocal. You know what I'm saying? Even, be, even being more vocal about now, I was never this vocal in my mm. life. You see what I'm saying? Uh, and the reason why I was never this vocal because I didn't have a, a real belief in myself and I didn't believe that my ideas were smart enough and that people would take them in consideration. That's what I, that's what I believe because of you know, the sense of sort of household and environment that I grew up in that you know, invalidated, uh, that invalidated a lot. You see what I'm saying? So a lot of emotional experiences, the things that I experienced as a child were invalidated for the simple fact of you're lying, this is not truthful, you're whatever, whatever, you're being hard-headed. You see what I'm saying? So I had a lot of that energy. So for me, it took for a time period uh, for me to go through being taken advantage of, go through me not having my voice, not being vocal about being in spaces where I was uncomfortable to now being more vocal about those things, walking in rooms and being able to like, you know, say how I feel, be in a relationship and talk about my emotional experience. You know what I'm saying? So this to me was the huge change of what I learned, but me diving deeper into myself was allowed me to access those things. You see what I'm saying? That I never would have been able to access. So me and you would have never been able to talk like this because I would have still been in the ego artistry mode. You understand what I'm saying? So you would have never been able to see the real version of who I am because of what the industry had would have painted me as. You see what I'm saying? As opposed mm -hmm. to me stepping outside of that. So I think that was one of the main things that is very different is me being able to explain my experiences, explain what I went through vocally, vocalize that. You see what I'm saying? And I think that's probably one of the big changes uh, that my fantasy is like, oh, I see he's being more vocal because naturally 
I can I can like uh, I can insulate. You see what I'm saying? Which means handle my part, my problems. I didn't, I didn't, you know, in private and my own thing. I would never bring them to a podcast and on my experiences. But what I've learned now is bringing those things into balance. Wow. You see what I'm saying? Is that you know, as I go through things, you learn things and you heal them in order to teach them. You know what I'm saying? In order to you know share your story with other people. So um, this is what I'm doing now. No, hold up, hold up. That's crazy. Cause isn't it crazy how life has this way of like repeating itself? If you if you don't fix what need to be fixed, so like you 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 talk about this thing where coming up in the household, you probably wasn't able to express yourself how you wanted to, right? Mm -hmm. And that's what most of the black environments that I know, right, right. <laughs> Shut your ass up, fuck you, something to cry for. I mean, you are giving me something to cry for, but even that mm -hmm. dynamic, right? Yeah. Then you step into the industry and you are flaming hot. Mm -hmm. I think you even told the story one time. Callum wants to go a different route for us, independent. I want nothing crazy, but he wanted to go his own route. But y'all didn't really, he didn't really communicate that to you the way it could have been, whatever the case may be, right? Mm. But even in that situation, it's like your voice is shut down because you really can't say anything publicly. I'm reminded. It, I'm reminded that my voice don't matter. I'm reminded that like, yo, I'm going to go have this decision that I'm reminded that this is my company. Mm. I'm reminded that this is my thing that I'm going to do what's best for my company. And I respect that. As a person, as a man, I respect that you should do best for what you feel is your company, your business, it's your entity. So, that's, but that what, still what, takes so, away so, from your voice, right? So, for me, in my mind, being that we are all mirrors of each other, it's like, so what does that mean for me? Mm. What do I own? What do I have at the end of the day? You see what I'm saying? Will I be priority for real? You see what I'm saying? So, for me, there was just some internal things that I was dealing with that I felt like I needed to come out of. I needed to stretch myself further. You see what I'm saying? And it was a challenge because of the platform was so large. You see what I'm saying? But I also knew that, like, I can't restrict myself to this particular platform because that's almost like not having faith in what God is, is, is allowing or doing in my life. You see what I'm mm -hmm. saying? Or has for me. You mm -hmm. dig what I'm saying? So, like, for most people, I get it. Nothing was wrong, right? I didn't have to, like, I chose and made the decision to move forward. People go at Cali, they up, upset it, dog, whatever. It's no bad blood, it's no bad energy because even contractually, there were some things that like, you know, dog could have done, but we had a really, really great relationship. And I think most of all is that uh, what I've learned too is, you know, I appreciate what we had. I appreciate mm -hmm. that relationship. I appreciate that moment. And again, always being a student. So for me, I was always, I never looked at that and had resentment towards it, but I always can look at, look at that as like a guide of what to do, how to move. You see what I'm saying? How I want to carry myself, the type of individual and how I want to handle my business and go about it. And I always knew that how I handled that made me feel good about moving forward, mm -hmm. about what I was going to create in the future. See, I'm just talking about the, not even just that situation. Forget the names. Mm -hmm. I'm talking about you as a person, right? We're talking about mm -hmm. being a human. And like so many times as fans, as consumers, we look at you guys like superheroes because, mm -hmm. I mean, bro, music changed our lives, For right? Sure. So the music that you make create this image of a Superman, a, a, a Batman, right? Mm -hmm. So sometimes we aren't able to acknowledge you as a human as you are, right? But I only say that because like, look at, look how similar we are, far from different. Mm -hmm. You came up in a similar household, right? Voice was shut down. We get into the industry, one of our biggest artists, voice shut down, right? Intentionally or not, unintentionally or not. And then I'm thinking about, it was the time where, and you can correct me if I'm wrong, because I'm, I'm still just going back on my mind. You, you your ex, y'all had two children and one passed? Mm -hmm. Yes. At what time was that compared to like when all of the, the contract stuff was going on? How mm -hmm. far along was that? Was that far? That was in, uh, that was 2011. So, so which is interesting with my kids is that my daughter was, was like the hustle hard baby and my son was the Bugatti baby. Mm. So my daughter was 2011, my son was 2013. Those, that's when I released the hustle hard single. So that happened, so that was in May. So that was, where was I? So I was actually uh, coming into uh, like self identity because mm -hmm. to me hustle hard was a self identifying record for me. It was a moment to me where I started to kind of really start to grab the wheels on my career and make my own decisions. Like that's where that ping for me started because for me at that point my 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 first album had did okay. My second album had did okay at that time. 
Um, well, my first album did well. My second album did okay. I feel like it kind of came out too fast. But then that was a tough period. It was a struggle at that time. Back at the condo, this was the time when reaching out, like, you know, Cali was on the road, you know, doing his thing. People are out doing their thing. Studio was being used and stuff. So this was a real, this was a moment of like, who are you going to be from this moment? Like, this will tell a lot. And so uh, that's a lot of that was going on. So it was really like, Life and death, honestly, dog. Like a mm. part of me at that, you know, small parts of me were dying and uh, new parts of me were being created, you know. It wasn't at a time where, um, you wait, you had a. Yeah, uh huh. A twin, uh huh. Yeah, one of the, the tw like. 2011. 2011. When that's happening, the twin passes. Mm -hmm. I can only imagine the, ter the turmoil that brings in a household, right? Because, like, bro, man, that's crazy because, like, you have two individuals who's working through something mm -hmm. and just being real, like where we come from, our backgrounds, we don't know how to deal with that. We don't know how to agree with that, but the yeah. only way we know how to is point the finger at one another. Right. I'm wondering like, how was that time, especially dealing with all you had to deal with in the industry? Mm -hmm. It was difficult. Probably been one of the most difficult times in my life that I've ever experienced and had to move through as a man. Uh, it taught me a lot about myself, right? It also uh, taught me uh, I learned in the moments of like the type of father that I knew that I was going to be and how I would show up for my children. So for me, it was turmoil. It was in a moment of space of grief, um, space of disbelief, questioning God, um, you know, questioning everything at that point, you know, from having a live, you know, born child to, um, you know, to her not being able to pursue life. And my, she was here alive six months, you know what I'm saying? Like here on this earth side. So, uh, it was it was really challenging, really, really challenging. Um, you know, I grieved. I grieved for weeks, you know, and it's an ongoing process. I think it's always uh, a pain point that comes up. And it's always now if I hear about it, you know, I get emotional about it or cry in my private time about it um, and keep her name in, in existence. You know what I'm saying? Lyric Star was her name. So for me, man, it's, uh, you know, she she's here with me. She's in every decision that I make. You dig what I'm saying? And regardless of those tough times, dog, it's just, you know, I had to move forward. And I know, like, do what's best for her. You know what I'm saying? And her sister. You know what I'm saying? So you got to grieve, man. And grieving is a, is a lifelong process. You yeah, I was going to ask you because, like, bro, I got a 10-month-old. A mm -hmm. And we in the month of June uh, is Men's Mental Health Month. And I'm just from man to man, from father to father. Mm -hmm. In the most tragic moment of your life, how are you to grieve? Like, how do you grieve? How do you get over something like that? Uh, you don't get over. I don't, I don't know if I've ever, I will ever get over it. You know, there's times I can be out of town. I can be, you know, vividly. I, I, I believe in, uh, I'm very spiritual. So I, uh, I connect to those that have departed us. You know what I'm saying? I still speak to my grandmother. I still speak to my daughter. Um, and they visit me. They visit me. So I just think, like, you grieve by, you know, you go heal about it, you know, uh, you, you know, I think my childhood healing that I've, you know, that I've done um, has helped a lot. You know, crying has helped a lot. You know, uh, you know, having a safe space, having my wife create such a safe space for me to be honest, to be vulnerable about how I feel uh, is important, man. And knowing that I don't have to change my experience. If I'm emotional and I feel sad, if I feel like, you know, I'm missing her today, like my daughter's birthday was May 25th, mm. you know, and that was a very emotional experience for me because my daughter's 13, which means that my other daughter would have been 13, you know. So um, we honor her in love, you know what I'm saying? Um, I have my time, I have my peace, but uh, for the most part, bro, it's going to always be an ongoing process. When you had those times, I think this is super important for, for, for men out there specifically. A lot of times we don't know how to vocalize or communicate when we when we need a moment, uh -huh. like how how are you able to communicate that to your wife, to the people that surround you when you really just need a second? And how are you before you vocalize it? How are you able to recognize it first? Mm. Uh, well, I'm in tune with my body, so I know like uh, as I do like breathing work and stuff, I notice if I feel any uncomfortability in my body. So I notice that uh, by doing meditation and breathing, it's about where do I feel pain points in my body. You see what I'm saying? So I know for me. If I may be feeling something in my solar plex or something like that, sometimes I know something going on um, with me spiritually. So, uh, you know, I go to her and just you know, be honest. I'm sad. Like, I'm feeling sad. You know, and we get to the root of the sadness of why are you sad, man? I'm just feeling sad today because, uh, you know, I really miss my daughter. You know what I'm mm. saying? I really wish she was here. 
you know, I really wished uh, that I, I could, you know, that, that that I could be running outside with her or or teaching her things or coaching her things or me we in the kitchen, me and her, me and her sister, you know, uh, she's making things, we doing it together, me teaching her different things, me holding her hand in the park, me walking with her, me doing her hair, me parting her hair, you know, uh, me, uh, you know, you know, shaking her to sleep, you know, all that good stuff, you know. Um, so yeah, I just identif- I did I I identify that mainly, man. It's like the main thing is knowing like what I feel, and if I mm-hmm. feel sadness, man, I'm able to you know operate in that, you know. So and I allow myself to feel sad. I don't try mm-hmm. to change my experience or nothing like that. I'm never too manly for it because what I recognize over my time of healing is that like these are strengths. This is how you want to express yourself. But I've been never I've never been taught to express myself in that way. You see me? Mm-hmm. So like you know these are the things that I learned, and this is what like why I had to get in tune with myself. How do we articulate that to the audience for the men that's watching to really understand and hear that? Because like, you know, we've been talking about men's mental health month all month and how it's hard to be a man, especially mm-hmm. because we like we're providers. And a lot of times we might, even though we can vocalize how we feel and communicate, we don't mm-hmm. feel like we can. Right. So a lot of times we're putting things on our back and we just storing it in that backpack and that's just more burdens that we carry in, right? Mm-hmm. While we still trying to provide for the family. And we ain't able to like really say how we feel, how our counterparts can sometimes. Mm-hmm. Or that's what we think. Right. Right. So when I hear a man that's like, man, that's got in tune with his emotions, got in tune with his feelings and how he feel and able to articulate that yeah. and really pause when he need to pause, that's like a different, that's like a different level of life you unlock. Yeah. And I'm trying to get there. I want my homies to get there because it's hard, man. It get hard. It's hard. It's the most excru- excruciating work you ever do, bro. Mm. Excruciating work. Like, you know, and, and what I love about this too, why I say like timing is everything because this conversation is was even necessary and like uh, uh, the timing of it is perfect. Like, that's crazy. It's, it's perfect. That's like I'm, I'm being honest, bro. Yeah. Like <clears throat> in this season of truth and honesty, bro, and where we are, like it's, 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 it's a necessity, especially everything happening in the world, dog. We need support and community and ways to figure things out. You see what I'm saying? And tools to be able to do so. Um, so I, I, 1000%, bro. Yeah. I think, um, it's funny because <clears throat> we always talk about growth, right? And it mm-hmm. not being a destination, but it being an ongoing thing. Mm-hmm. And like the fact, I just want to point that out. Hold up. I got notes. I don't even think I touched on none of them. Like, it's just, like, it's crazy how this really unfolded. Yeah. But whatever, man. It, Cause I've been trying to do this face to face interviews for transparency for a while or whatever. But, um, we get it done now. Men's Mental Health Month and the conversation that we're having. It's just, God is crazy, bro. It's just, yeah. it's just crazy. I just want to put that note. I think when we talk, going back to what I was going to say, when we're talking about growth, a lot of us think it's this destination, right? Right. We break up. Let me go, let me go to therapy. You know what I'm saying? Let me get right. Mm-hmm. And you think you're good. But then you find out that you're always good in the absence of your problems. Right. Right. It's always good there. Right. You can never really see how far you've grown mm-hmm. until you put in the middle of adversity mm-hmm. and it's like that right there is a mother so like even going back to like we won't go back and forth because like of course we ain't trying to dwell on the past but a lot of these things people can learn from because that's what they know right mm-hmm. when the label situation happened your daughter situation happened right this is all levels of disappointment yes and a lot of times when we're disappointed as black men mm-hmm. we get want to explode yes right you think about ace hood then right. you think about ace hood now how are you able to measure the growth? And how can you teach that to somebody if it's possible? Or yeah, is that yeah. something that you got to just grow through? No, it's possible. It's possible. Uh, man, the growth has been substantial, my dog. You know what I'm saying? I think the reality is, dog, is like, you know, we all got to heal on our own time. You know what mm-hmm. I'm saying? It has to, I think that's the difference in it. You know what I'm saying? We all really come to terms with ourselves at a certain point in our lives where we decide like, bro, whatever I'm doing, bro, ain't working. And like, you know what I'm saying? I want some new experiences. I want some new, you know what I mean? I want some new experiences, new people around me, new energy, new things to come into my life, new career, whatever it is that you're building. You know what I'm saying? You're going to want that new thing. You mm-hmm. know what I'm saying? So, um, tell your question again. I'll... No, it's basically going back, looking at all the disappointments that happened, mm-hmm. right? Publicly, non-publicly, only mm-hmm. you know. And you look at how you handle those things then mm-hmm. compared to how you handle the disappointment now. Yeah. And I'm wondering, like, what are some of the things that you specifically see in your life, even though we might not be able to see it when mm-hmm. it comes to the growth inside you? Yeah. So, man, you know, um, 
Yeah, dog. And go back to, me, to it. To me, so it. to me, you have to like, again, the moment you decide to say you want to heal, it's like that's the choice and the decision, right? So I think for, for me, it's like, I'm going to just tell you what I did, man. You know, and I started at what moment? Uh, literally the moment I went independent. So I'm trying to tell you, like, like, like it's like, it's <laughs> like it was my, my, my steps are ordered, brother. Like they like no cap, like they ordered, meaning like the moment I gained my independence was the moment that I decided and God sent me a message of like, I don't know what this going to look like. I don't know what this going to feel like. I don't know where I'm going. I'm in the dark right now. I ain't got the same homies around me. I ain't got the same people around me. Life has changed. Everything has changed. So for me, I'm forced into this environment where I'm forced to become something new. You see what I'm saying? Where now I'm forced to empower myself, where I'm forced to sit in darkness, where I'm forced to like, now my life, you know, then my life has started changing. So as opposed to like, I started having, I started having much more of a relationship with me. You see what I'm saying? Started analyzing everything in my life. Why do you love traveling? Why do you love doing the things that you do? Why do you love being who you are? And I started learning like little addictions. You know what I'm saying? I started learning my addiction to uh, uh, to people. You see what I'm saying? To the uh, to to performing and, and 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 getting the gratification of people. Like I was addicted to the feeling of tell me that I'm great. Tell me that a thing that I'm doing is wonderful. So I started noticing how. Uh, uh, I was powerless in so many ways because so many other people could move me when they wanted to move me. You see what I'm saying? Like you could get me to believe this thing in this contract because I would never go and get the information for myself. Mm. You see what I'm saying? So to me, that's the flip flop that changed. It was the self-investment and everything else led me on a journey of like, okay, now we got to go back and get the information. So now we got to go back to school. I went back to school and went to Berkeley's and did a six-week class. Many people don't know that about the music business so I can understand it. You see what I'm saying? Uh, from then, I started kind of separating myself from, uh, from environments that no longer serve me. You see what I'm saying? Which means now, now I'm spending a lot more time with myself. Now I'm more frustrated. Now I'm more angry because like, I want to be doing these other things. I want to be doing all, you see what I'm saying? But like that my relationship with these things are changing because I'm changing. Now I'm becoming something different. Now I'm becoming something greater. And that's the most difficult part because most of us will revert back into the, to the, to, to our most comfortable selves. It's easy to revert back to that self when everything look misty and you in that dark room and you don't know where to point to and you trying to decide where the light coming from. Mm. So the reality is of what I did is sat in the darkness to become the light. You understand? That's my, that's my system of saying I'm empowering myself so much to the point to where when I step outside, it's almost going to be like a godly effect because I'm practicing in the way that God would do it. You see what I'm saying? Like, so he would be proud operating in, from that trust and belief in myself from the things that I eat, from the, the way that I talk, from the way that I carry myself, from the accountability, like all of these things, you see what I'm saying? Mm. Doing as nature does. Like, so those were the components to me. And obviously being able to do all of these things in a safe space, you know, having my wife there and stuff like that. But, you know, when you breaking yourself down, that shit is uncomfortable. It's like peeling back scabs. Like they hurt. Mm. Them shit is hurt, cuz you feel what I'm saying? That's like my crazy. nigga like, they don't feel good. So it's like, damn, I gotta really look at that. Damn, am I, am I really this person? Damn, do I really act like that? Damn, I really been like this, dog. Damn, what? Damn, I ain't the person I thought I was. But I thought I was this da 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 da, -da super supportive and da 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 da. And then you start to learn, like, mm, oh, I was mm, only mm. performing that. Oh my god. Oh damn, like I, I thought I had the information, but I thought, okay, I, damn, I thought they really supported my vision. I thought, oh damn, I thought, you, you see what I'm saying? You starting to having that relate that conversation with yourself of like, okay, okay, like I got to change some things, and now. You know, and life happens, man. So no, bro, you you dropped a bomb that I ain't even gonna lie. I don't think the people caught on to doing as nature does. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Man, that's probably Real one time. of the hardest things to do because it's just kind of like it's a prayer. What the serenity prayer? God grant me the serenity to accept the things I cannot change, mm -hmm. the courage to change the things I can, but the yes. wisdom to know the difference. Yes, sir. Accept the things I cannot change. Yes, sir. Do as nature does. Uh -huh. Oh my God, just let uh -huh. it be. Right. That's probably one of the hardest things to do, bro. right? Because it's hard to tell a person, like, don't, like, if I told you not chasing your dreams will actually bring you closer. Mm. Yo, we go, uh, hold up, bro. We, wait, 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 wait. I'm skipping around because I, I wanted to ask a question. I'm going to go straight into it. Forget it. And I'm going to ask my question in a second. For so. When you say, I got addicted to like being like performative, mm -hmm. right? Performing for people, right? Or mm -hmm. like people reacting to me performing. Mm -hmm. How does that actually, outside of the music, 
How was that affecting your personal life with your relationship? Because that's the first thing I'm thinking, like, because... Oh, it was affecting it greatly. Because that was a part of my identity. That was a part of where my worth went. This was this is for a lot of artists. This is why we, you know, oh, I'm doing this for my family and boom, boom, boom. But as I, even over time, as I analyze it, oh, I'm doing this for my family, yet I'm spending less time with my family, more time out in the streets, more time out handling my business, which is great, right? There's sacrifices that come in life, you know what I'm saying? But at the same time, for me, it's like, all right, you got those sacrifices, right? But you 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 got to be able to like, I don't know, I lost my train of thought right you, now. That's fine. Yeah. You know. Because my mind, because it's a lot of, lot it's, it's of plays a lot, happening It's a lot, it's yeah, a yeah. lot. Yo, yeah. oh my God. You know what I learned? And you can correct me at any time. We say we doing it for our family almost as a defense mechanism. Because honestly, we're doing it for ourselves. Our family just benefit from it. Yes. Like, yes. we're not, our family will be absolutely fine mm -hmm. if we didn't do it as much. Right. If we didn't work so hard. Right. You could be a regular, honest, nine to five working guy, make pretty decent money, right. and your family will be good. You don't right. need millions. Right. right. We say that to ourselves to, to mask or, or hide whatever we going through, right? To, like, mm -hmm. to, to make excuses for it when it's really like, to be honest, bro, yeah. we're not doing it for our family. Facts. We're doing it for ourselves, yeah. whatever that may be. Mm -hmm. But they do benefit from it, though. Right, right, right. But for us, it could be like, it might be egotistical. It's something to fuel something else. It could get us to uh, a self of worth, a sense of self-worth. Mm. You see what I'm saying? So for me, these are the things that I never knew, you know, the relationship that I had with that because I could never see that in that. To me, I'm just doing what I love to do. You see what I'm saying? But also, the thing that I love to do is also enabling me too and has enabled me because okay I came in so many other people is handling my business and doing all this stuff to literally when I came out independent bro I did not know how to function as a normal person mm. meaning like like how normal people do stuff I wasn't going to Target I wasn't going to stuff I wasn't going out to do like everything was with my team with my people like it was already in a in a celebrity style environment and or environment in which I would be prioritized you see what I'm saying? So again, that's the ego flare. That's the relationship that I have with that, that I know that's going to boost my ego. That's going to make me feel worthy. And I'm attached myself to these experiences. So my thing is, for me, I had to learn, like, who are you outside of these experiences? Who are you if you ain't traveling for six months? Huh? Mm. Who are mm -hmm. you then? Do you feel as confident? Do you feel as strong? Do you feel as, as capable? You see what I'm saying? Do you feel like you, you, you worthy? And, and for me, like, that's why I struggled, because I didn't feel worthy in those moments. You see what I'm saying? That's why I struggled. And that's when I knew like something was wrong and that this game had a real hold in me. You see what I'm saying? Because my identity had been clogged up into this. You see me? Because, you know, we're talking about me getting a deal, homie, at like 18, homie. Like, mm. I wasn't a man yet. I learned how to be ace hood before anything. Mm. For real, for real. My pops went around. So, you know, put on the swag, put the da da da, do my thing, travel the world, like, get the money. Like, yeah, it's all great. But the moment I had to sit with self and sit in silence and disconnect myself from these things, it was the, it was the most terrifying thing I ever had to do mm. because it felt like I was, felt like I had jumped off a, 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 like a hundred foot cliff, bro. Mm. You know what I'm saying? Like, that's what it felt like. I tell people all the time, the equivalence is like, imagine a bomb, like there's a room full of glass and like, a, like a, all the glass explodes into, many, in, into thousands of pieces. Now you forced to take every little piece and, and put it back together. Mm. So that means all the little ones, you got to place them back together. That's the hardest shit ever to do. So Yo, it's a process. Give us a timeline. So when you go independent, mm -hmm. music 2017 is so when I got my appendix. How did that change the music? And give us some songs that you dropped during the transition of you growing into this man, per se. Oh, yeah, man. I gave them... Uh, you know, records like To Whom It May Concern, mm. uh, you know, uh, like the interludes that I put on the project, uh, gave them records like We Ball, gave them records like Undefeated, I gave them records like, uh, you know, Came With The Posse, gave them records, uh, you know, I feel like the whole capsule of just trust the process was just the whole. But these are songs that you, and cor again, correct me, because mm -hmm. these are songs that you're cool, because I, I listened to uh, a few of those songs, because mm -hmm. like I was a fan. Yeah. But I feel like those were slept on songs more so. Mm -hmm. So the average listener would say, you fell off. Mm -hmm. But you know, oh, I'm just getting started. Right. How do you, I guess you, you growing into your confidence, right? Like, so you, you're a different man now. But mm -hmm. I'm just wondering, how do you deal with that now? 
Well, I'm in the arena. You, I don't, <laughs> I can't argue with the niggas in the cheap seats. I'm in the arena, my nigga. I'm in here. I'm doing it. <laughs> I'm really writing the bars. I'm really writing the hits. I'm really doing it. I'm really pulling up to the shows and putting the show list together. I'm really in it. I'm really doing it. I'm really there as a father. I'm really there as a, like I'm really in it. If, if you really in it, to a man to another man who's really in it or a person to another person, they understand the they study, understand. They understand it. Yeah, yeah. If you don't understand, that means you just have not reached yet. You just have not gotten there. And or like, you know what I'm saying, you don't want to be in the arena, you just want to be the commentator, which is fine. That's why we got commentators and that's why you got people to actually play. I'm actually in the field with it, figuring it out, doing it, making it happen. Like, you know what I'm saying? Working through my shit. So for me, I don't allow that to, I don't allow that you fell off and boom, boom. This is the greatest I've ever looked and never felt and never been. Mm. Most wealthiest I've ever felt, ever been. You see what I'm saying? And this right here was just, and, and, and this is why this is so beautiful because it's not from validation of people. It's not from the world's validation, no matter what the world doing. Everybody else doing, duh, 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 trying to fight their life, hood in a cold tub. Mm. <laughs> hood meditating, man. Hood, hood, hey, hood out here grounding, man. Mm. <laughs> you feel me? Hood on the roller coaster with his kids. <laughs> like, I'm with wifey. We, at, you know what I'm saying? We in Costa Rica healing. Private retreat. You can't even get there. You don't even know about it. Mm. 2017, is that when you start the workout process too and meditating yep. and things? Yep, yep, yep. Let's talk about that, right? Yep. I just started running, right? And at first it's because, like I, I shared this story a couple times. Like I wanted to lose weight. I went to the doctors. They was like, I was on the verge of being like uh, pre-diabetic. I'm like, nah, can't do that. You know what I'm saying? So I go running and I, I see that it's working. Like I see I'm losing weight. I'm boxing every day. I'm running. And I'm like, this shit is working. Yes, sir. And a, a switch flipped. And I'm wondering, when did it flip for you? Because, and this is still giving me goosebumps to this day. It started to become more about my mental than my physical, even though my physical was transforming. And it was amazing. Like I never even wanted to take my shirt off at one time, bro. On a yeah. beach, I was embarrassed. Like getting shirt, getting the little Jamaican see-through shirts with nets yeah, and shit. Yeah, yeah. Like, because I ain't want to take yeah. my shirt. This is I crazy. I had one of them on for Father's Day. This is ridiculous, yeah. bro. Yeah. So now I'm taking my shirt off, six pack, going crazy. And then it just switched like, bro, My, I feel good. My body feel good. Yeah. But my mind feel 10 times better than my body. And I can't even explain it. Yeah. I'm pretty sure it had to yeah. be a flip for yeah, you yeah. as well. Yeah, yeah, that fitness, man, is spiritual for me, dog. Like, the moment, again, like, the, the, when I, the moment the whole independent thing went down, mentally, physically, spiritually, dog, you know what I'm saying? That's, those are the areas that we're going to attack. You see what mm -hmm. I'm saying? So, to me, fitness was always spiritual. You know what I'm saying? Half the time I'm in the gym is because, to me, these represent obstacles in our life. And to me, I want to be able to, it's about, like, it's about our responses as men or just people in general is how you respond to the thing. So if I become comfortable with being uncomfortable, you dig what I'm saying? To me, my resp I could always monitor my response. So, uh, yeah, man, if I see that 315 down there on the bar and I'm about to pick it up, you know, I think about anything. I think about those who don't want you to do it, that people want you to stop and don't be able to like, nah, man, this could be a hurdle, an obstacle, or this could be, you know, a contract that you got to get over, or this could be, you know, an illness or whatever that might be, something that you might be dealing with or frustrated about. And in the moment that I move that, the moment that we move the energy, now we moving and shifting the frequency. Mm. You see what I'm saying? And to me, it's just every day it's an affirmation of like, you can, you can do it. Another one, another set, another one. Give me two more. You got this. I believe in you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Again, uh-huh. Get it. Dog shit. Like, all of that shit right there is, 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 is self-affirmation to yourself, dog. You know what I'm saying? Bro, you going crazy, bro. This is fire, bro. bro. This is fire. You know what else, bro, when it comes to this fitness journey? It helps. You said it. You was like, yo, if I tell you not chasing your goal. I forgot exactly what you said, but basically, like, not chasing your goal is going to get you closer to your goal, right? Mm -hmm. Bro, as men, it's like we so focused. Our work become our identity. Mm -hmm. We become, we think we become who we are for what we do. Like, right. I'm, I'm a podcaster, right? Like, right. no, nigga, like, that's just what I do. Nigga, that's just... Right, this right. is what I do, right? Right, right. But before you get into the mental part of it, you start to believe it. Like you become this character that other people see you as, right? Mm -hmm. And it gets frustrating when you aren't able to knock off the bucket list of what you think that character should knock off. And now, like, you might want a Grammy. You get nominated, you don't win. Now, I'm frustrated. 
You can't even appreciate getting nominated because it's like, nah, bro, I'm better than that. Like, I'm supposed to win. I'm this person, right? Mm -hmm. Same with this. I start getting these big guests. And now it's like, I need to get another big guest. When I don't get them, I'm frustrated. I start get, seeing these numbers. And when I don't get the numbers that I see, I'll get frustrated. Working out, bro, running has put me in a mental solitude where I'm able to accomplish goals outside of work so I feel good rather, rather than it's getting done or not. Mm. And I can't even believe that I'm here. I'm not even going to lie because it's like, it was a time where I'd be focused. I need to get this guest. Mm -hmm. Now, yeah. not saying I don't care, but okay. Yeah. Because I'm accomplishing goals outside of what I think I need to accomplish. Every day when I run, yes, okay, sir. I might do five miles today. I might do five and a half tomorrow. Right. I just accomplish a goal. Yes, I sir. might run eight minutes pace today, 7.50 tomorrow. But I'm a, now my mind, I'm, I'm getting used to accomplishing small goals, getting small wins, and I feel better about myself. Mm -hmm. That's what it done for me for mm -hmm. sure, bro. That's beautiful, bro. Like, that's beautiful. this shit is crazy. Yeah, that's beautiful, bro. Mm -mm -mm. Uh, and that's important, dog. That's important. I think I... I can relate to that because it speaks to, you know, the people wanting to keep you solely in the identity of a musician. Like, mm. you know, I know my fans love it, man. And, and we going to drop so much music and release so much more projects. Uh, but you got to also, man, understand that I'm, I'm human. You know what I'm saying? Which means that now more than ever in my life, like I want to express the fullness of who I am, dog. Mm. I'm really into some shit, bro. You see what I'm saying? Especially like just this health and wellness and this mental health. You see what I'm saying? Like I'm an advocate, bro. That's really the space that I'm in because... I've gained so much knowledge and wisdom, dog, to now I want to teach people and speak about it and broadcast my experiences of what I went through because this is what the project also, the new project Soul will entail. Uh, it's, it's sort of like that experience and how I was able to integrate all of these great parts of myself. You see what I'm saying? But I used to feel like I used to have to kill off these versions in order to become this thing. You see what I'm saying? But the reality it was like, nah, man, like you were all of these things. You feel me? So it's like, get the fans that shit that they love and they want to hear and that passion and that anger and that da 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 and the frustration, but also the joy and the light and be able to access that. So uh, I understand what you're saying, man. But like, you know, so tapping into those other uh, other little wins outside of that, like the fitness or something like that, like being a father or and it like make you better. being a dope, it make you better, bro. And for me, like again, because that's the human experience, dog. To me, you get you get great with them. Relate, like that's what matters, dog. To me, like having great encounters with people nowadays. Like mm. if I have a great interaction with somebody, like my day, like that's a win facts, for me. You facts. feel me? Like that's oh, where I'm at man. now in my life. Like mm. if I had an exchange with dog and we shared information and we made each other better, like this is what I'm on mm. most of the time nowadays. You see what I'm saying? It's having these sorts of conversations because when you leave, you leave full. You leave better than how you came. So it's like this is this that's that zone that I be in, and uh, you know I have to jump out that zone and get back into that. Yeah, yeah, dog shit, which we about to <laughs> yeah. get back into with the music shit. But, like, you know, that's the space I've been living in and loving on, man. It's like, you know, it's, it's that space, like you say, with the fitness and stuff like that, too. So I'm curious because, like, talking about jumping and back into it, right? It was a time where you felt like you almost had to, like, dumb down your music for mm -hmm. the people to understand. Yeah. Isn't it weird? You had to dumb down your music to reach the masses. Mm -hmm. Not pick it up, right? Like, you got to dumb right. it down to reach the masses, which is crazy. I'm wondering... Full circle moment. You're independent now. You learn so much. But you still recognize that you got to, sometimes you got to jump back in that space to give them the music. But do you still, do you feel like you still got to dumb it down or is it different now? No, nah, it's different. You know, I still feel like I have to explain it in a way in which you can understand it. So it's not so much maybe it's dumbing it down, but uh, uh, transferring it or broadcasting it in a way in which the fans, I feel like, can receive it. You see what I'm saying? It's like, it's instilling a, a very nice package. You dig? So, uh, again, I think for me, um, in terms of because business is still business and I still run a business, you know what I'm saying? Hood Nation is still my business. I'm still in the music business. So when I do drop projects and do things, I want them to be successful. Mm. You see what I'm saying? So for me, you know, um, it's, it's making sure that I'm still in tune with what the fans hear and what they like. So I've been gaining information uh, since my time of being independent in terms of like, well, what do the fans really love for me? What do they really want to hear? And as I start going to prioritize these records, like, like the records that I mentioned might have been slept on, but these are gold records, the undefeated, the We Balls. Like these are gold on the way to being platinum records that people don't know. But like, you know, um, 
you know, staying in tune with the fans, dog. So for me, I recognize because I'm like, yeah, yeah, yeah. On the other projects, I was so anxious to give y'all my growth, give the people my growth, my love, my light and all of that. But at the same token, it's like, you know, I'm still that dog too. You know what I mean? Like, Ace of Stood still get busy. You know what I'm saying? Like, Ace ain't going to let nobody disrespect me. Ace of still pop off and, man, what? If you disrespect him, you see mm -hmm. what I'm saying? I still can can click into that gear. And not only that, there's still frustrations that I've dealt with in, in, in parts of my story that haven't been told yet. Mm. You see what I'm saying? So I think people would like to know about, well, what went down? What were you feeling and what were you, you know, dealing with during this time? So what are some of them things that you want to tap into with soul? Uh, for me, dog, soul is like the rawest version of who I am. It's the anger. It's the frustration. It's, it's more so of like the pain, you know. But hood, ace hood, this guy that's working out so much, you meditate and you ground it. Mm-hmm. Independent. What's the what's the anger like? What, what what are you frustrated about? What is sitting on your soul that you want? Well, to it's about? not it's not current anger or frustration, but it's like it's it's uh, what can I say? Uh, uh, I think it's it was unspoken about, but uh, I say that because there was a narrative put out to the world. You know what I'm saying? That I think like now it's important to like really tell the truth about what that story. Narrative? You know what I mean? Like about the things that I went through, whether it was like, what was my real experiences with my We The Best situation? Like there was a time period to where I felt like people wanted to know, like, how did you make it through that window? Like that 2017 window, 2019, 20, like that was a real window for me in terms of developing myself, developing my sound, stuff like that. Um, so I think it's important to take people down that journey of like, you know, how did I learn about the contracts? You see what I'm saying? How did I invest in my business? How did I find myself? Like, how do I how did I arrive here? Basically, yeah, I want to know. You see what now. I'm saying? How did you, yeah, how yeah. Did you learn? I mean, about that's it? a that's a that's a that's a longer story, you know. But for me, it's 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 through the healing. It's through the um, you know the self reflection. Um, it's through allowing myself to feel frustrated. It's through uh, tapping in with like deeper parts. That's of how you got over it. How did you learn about it? Like you walk into a studio. I don't need to paint a picture. Like you walk into the studio, you see a contract. What the fuck? This is me. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I think for me, it's like, you know, it's probably some of the things that I wasn't as vocal about, right? So it's like, just because I handled my situation with grace doesn't mean that I didn't have an emotional experience on the other end of that. Mm. Doesn't mean that I didn't have outbursts in in private doesn't mean that I didn't like, you feel what I'm saying? Like, so it's some of those things of like, bro, how did you just, you know, because yeah, people would just see the, uh, you know, the end game of something of like, okay, how he arrived here. Okay, he's in this space, but like, this is how I got there. You see what mm -hmm. I'm saying? Like, but this is also what I dealt with in my off time. You see what I'm saying? This is what I felt like, no, 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 fuck that. No, 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 this a bitch ass. Like, no, 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 this a boom, boom, boom. So you got to express all of those parts of yourself where you felt like, no, 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 this was a moment even time where maybe I kind of hated myself. Mm -hmm. No, this was a time right here when I found love. This was a time like, so those experiences, you know what I'm saying? Yeah, I can imagine because like you say you got signed at 18, right? So mm -hmm. even 28, 2017, you're still like super young. Mm -hmm. And one thing we are used to, and I say this all the time, like, one thing about the hood and the industry, even though the industry always, for some reason, the rap industry specifically, always try to make a correlation to the streets and try to combine it when it's not. It ain't. Yeah. One thing about the streets that I do appreciate or the hood that I appreciate is this sense of like authenticity. If a nigga don't fuck with me in the streets, for the most part, I'm going to know. Because mm -hmm. he ain't going to fuck with me. Mm -hmm. He don't got to fuck with me. Yeah. If anything, he'll be slimy. But in the industry, niggas will fuck with you when it's beneficial to them. You ain't got to say this, but I'm going to say this shit. A nigga will fuck with you when it's beneficial to them. They'll present an opportunity because it could work for you, but it also work for them. And a lot of times, coming from nothing, we get so appreciative that we don't even understand what the fuck we getting into. Mm -hmm. And it's like, we ignore the red flags because it's like, man, this nigga changed, this person changed my life. And it's like, yeah, but... Do I want that? Because a nigga only changing my life because it's benefiting him 10 times more. So you're really using me as a pawn. Mm -hmm. I can only imagine what you, how you react in a moment when you're young and you don't even, you don't know how to mentally compartmentalize your thoughts and your feelings. Because mm -hmm. when we outside, ain't no such thing as mentally compartmentalizing our feelings. And thank God for growth because that's why a lot of our peers end up in jail and dead because they don't know how to control our emotions. Mm -hmm. But I'm saying to the young age that I'm just, I am wondering now like, before the growth, before you stepped into that lane, what were some things that like 
you really had to like like over overcome ego. Mm. I was I was ego too. You know, I was in my ego. Uh, you know, womanizer, womanizer to a certain degree. Oh uh, well, you couldn't. I was particular. You know, not too many people weren't even allowed in my presence or around me like that. You see what I'm saying? Like you couldn't really get close to me without coming through 15, 20 different people. Mm. You know what I'm saying? There's really no real access or anything like that. Um, you know, I think in certain scenarios, in certain cases, you know, I could have a, a, a mightier than thou. You know what I'm saying? Maybe not to, to the public, but I think some of the personal relationships that I would have. You see what I'm saying? Mm. So that's what they would pour into. They would pour off into those personal relationships that I would want to develop. Um, so I would start to see it there. I would start to see, you know, uh, in a lot of ways, I was disrespectful. You know what I'm saying? I didn't mind my tone. I felt like, you know, uh, if I was wrong or something like that, I could always change the scene. You know what I'm saying? I could always put you out or do something else. I was very different. Um, not as compassionate. You know what I'm saying? None of that. You know, I, I was pretty much a dog, man. I was pretty much a dog. I felt like, you know, I cared about my people and my people only for the most part. So do you, part to, and this is for you, partially how that situation happened and ended with, with the best. Do you feel like you brought that on yourself? Partially? What do you mean? Like how it ended? Because clearly that was a hurtful time. Uh, yeah, career. yeah. Anything that happens, uh, I take accountability for any any way that I showed up for anything. Uh, but for am I, do I take responsibility for how it ended, you say? No, I'm saying, is it some type of accountability that you take? What, for how it ended? Mm -hmm. Oh, of course. I ended it. Mm. I thought you said Khaled kind of like wanted to go his own way. So he just kind of like. Mm -mm. No, no, no. What I was saying is that uh, Khaled was taking guard. The label was becoming independent. Mm. The Like uh, normally you get with big distro distros. The distro was an independent distro. Okay. So they wasn't as powered and powerful as a major distro, like a Def Jam, like a Interscope or whatever that might be. They were a lot, they were a lot smaller label. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. So that's what that was. So it was that decision and that to say, okay, we're going to take this thing. It's, he's not saying, hey, I want to part ways from you. And I think this is a big misconception that people have. Like I tell people all the time, I made the decision to leave. This is, this is why I say like this is... Uh, you know, it's it's like uh, it's purpose for me, dog. It's purpose at this point because for me, it was me recognizing what was to come. You know what I'm saying? It was recognizing of like, okay, you may not be, you you're you not going to be prioritized. You won't have control over your business. Are you okay with knowing this information? Because again, all of our choices are in the information we do know or we don't know. So me, at the moment that I got all the information of knowing what I know while being under the label, then you have to make a decision. Because now you know who you in business with, who you dealing with, and you know their pain points and what makes them uncomfortable. If you ask about your business and it makes somebody uncomfortable, maybe that's a problem. Mm. If you run your business, you have your business, and you ask somebody, you see what I'm saying? Like that can be that can be difficult. So, uh, so that's what happened for me, and it was like for me, I wanted to tell a more authentic story about who I was as a person. So for me, that's why I decided to leave it because for me, I'm like, yo. I ain't going to be able to tell this story with this sort of energy or with this sort of guidance and leadership. Mm -hmm. Though I appreciate it and I love it and I'm super grateful for it, something is just telling me to kind of get out where I can. And as I look back on the industry now, I was right. How did that affect your rapper friends? I do that because like we all think they're friends, right? Mm -hmm. Or the peers, when they saw you disassociate yourself with that major name, right? Yeah. A lot of times people... They treat you a certain way because of who you connected to or what you connected to. Mm -hmm. But when you no longer connected to that, mm -hmm. that source, oh, I don't need you no more. Mm -hmm. I'm just curious, how was those relationships changed? Well, it was a gray area, but this is where I'm talking about, about like where there's still stories to be told. Because like what happened during that time, people want to know. You yeah. see what I'm saying? Like uh, it, it, it got weird because for the most part, uh, for me, I didn't come out blatantly and say, what was really going on with me or talk to my peers about what it was that I was actually dealing with. So they never knew it was all love at the end of the day, but it was like, uh, you know, there was a couple people who maybe have chose size about certain things, but, uh, for the most part, I distanced myself from a lot of that energy and like their stories and of why I distanced myself and felt the need to, to recreate, you know what I'm saying? For recreate for certain reasons. Um, but again, that's a part of the story, man, of like, you know, what happened during that time. That's what I'm trying to ask. I'm trying yeah. to figure out what happened. Yeah, yeah. But it's, 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 it it's a lot. I mean, it's a, it's, it's a lot happened, man. I mean, at that particular time, you know, uh, there was calls being made of like, you know, my records being played. There was issues for people having, 
uh, of playing my record, supporting me, anybody else that supported me. I think the goal was to uh, it was to ruin Ace Hood. I think the goal was to ruin my legacy. Was you know as I walk back in Florida and I see certain things, there's no real murals or anything like that in Media City. So I feel like the powers that be at that particular time tried to uh, minimize my image and my brand and myself and, and what I brought to the game. So for me. Uh, uh, so yeah, it was a lot of that going on at that time. No way, it's a lot of that going on. These is the insular, but these are the stories that people don't know about. Uh, most people do, but you know, obviously, my people and my fans in Florida would never let people forget it. But uh, for the most part, yeah, people wanted to wipe my wipe my legacy off the board. So the fact that like you know I've been trailing and doing it this long at this level uh, is really upsetting. Some people I could imagine are making some people. Uh, maybe uncomfortable in their skin because the boy look good, man. And the family yeah. look good, baby. Fact. Yo, <laughs> all right, the music shit is cool. I'm just curious because, like, bro, you came such a long way and, like, just watching the growth is, is crazy. What's the, the, um, the last thing you learned about fatherhood? Like, what was the last thing you learned? The last thing I learned about mm -hmm. fatherhood. Or, like, something happened and, like, you was, like, you came to a realization or, like, I don't know, it could have been an epiphany or whatever. Like, what was your last lesson that you learned? Oof. I'm always learning, though. So, what, my last lesson. Uh, or or ooh, even about maybe marriage, being a husband. Like My last lesson probably with the kids is to, uh, you know, take every moment as it comes, you know, as a father, you know. Um you know, give my children the space to undeniably be themselves, mm. you know, create the space for them to be free, to laugh, to be okay, to not be okay, to feel sad, to be upset, to express themselves, to talk about what it is that they're feeling. Uh, as a dad, I learned that's, that's probably one of the strongest things that I learned. It's, it's, it's important to give your kids a voice because mm. sometimes adults get it wrong too. You see what I'm saying? And uh, treating our, 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 you know, our young babies like human beings, preparing them for a world, a real world is, uh, is important. So I think that's one of the things that I learned as a, as a, as a parent, as a father, for mm. sure. I think, cause like you got a 13 year old, you said. Yeah, she 13, 13 and my son 10. So I have, I have a, a bonus daughter that's about to be 15 in August, right? Yes, sir. And like me and her mom's going through some stuff right now. And uh, the last thing I learned was like, this is a person too. Mm. Like she's her own person. Mm. She needs these conversations separate from her mother. Mm. And you have to have these conversations from person to person not from father to daughter or grown up to kid because she's old enough to understand. Mm -hmm. you, sometimes like, you don't, sometimes some conversations are hard because that's your child, you want to protect them. You don't like, you want to protect them from the hardships. Yeah, and it's like, that ha actually hurts. Right, right. And I learned that like, cause I just had a conversation when I brought this up because like, it just felt great, bro. Because it was a lot of things that she felt that she expressed to me and I was able to catch it before it got too, too bad, right? Cause I think yeah. a lot of times what happened is, we have something happen to us. And for somehow, some way, it's weird as hell. We do something in our life. And the same thing happened to the ones we love. But we was, what we were doing was trying to avoid it happening to somebody else. It's, you ever watched That's So Raven back in the day? Yeah. She would have a, a, a thought, right? Right. And so she would do everything in her power to change the outcome of what's about to happen. And everything she did made it happen. Right, so sometimes right. I see in my life is like right. I'm trying to change my path so much that the things that I'm doing is actually making it the same that happened to me. Right. So when I had the conversation, right. I saw the change. I'm like, this ain't never happened to me. I'm so glad we had this conversation and get through this. Mm -hmm. And that's why I was asking you about like fatherhood. Yeah. Like man, yeah. This fatherhood is special, bro. That's like, dope, bro. Fatherhood happy is belated Father's Day too. Nah, I thank you. Same to yeah, you, brother. Yeah. Same For to sure, you, brother. Dog. So that's I guess, fine. man, wrapping it up, man. I, I, where you at now? I know you got the uh, the fitness thing going on. You yeah. about to get into the music? Like, how are you? I don't know. Last time somebody asked you, like, how how is Ace Hood, man? Like, how are you? Uh, Ace Hood, he ready. Mm. You talking to Ace Hood? He 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 he, he ready. He's focused. Uh, he's excited. Mm. I'm excited. You know. Um, but that's the character, the, though. Right. That's the character. You know. Um, so in terms of when I think of Ace Hood, I think about the music in that okay. vehicle, right? But thinking about me as a person and my being, uh, I'm well, man. I'm well. Mm. Um, 
you know, I'm, I'm well. Dog. How is I'm marriage, well. man? Marriage is beautiful. Mm. Marriage is beautiful, man. Marriage is beautiful. It is. It is hard. It is. It is love. It is. Uh, it is forgiving. You know what I'm saying? It is patient. Um, man, it's it's beautiful, dog. Being in marriage and having a partner. How long you been married now? So I've been married five years. Next year, it's four. How long years y'all been together? Year. Ten years. Ten years. Yeah. How do you know? Because like you had a child with somebody else, and I'm assuming that. It was a, a different love then, but going from that to something else, how do you, like, if you could think 10 years back, how do you know this is the one? How do you mentally prepare to go through that transition? How do I know she was the one? Mm-hmm. Uh, because she challenged me. She challenged me, and uh, she held me to the expectation. She held me to a higher expectation. You see what I'm saying? Like, she held me at the standard that I wanted to be held at. You see what I'm saying? A man of integrity, a man of family, a man of loyalty, a man of honor, all of that. Um, and she she challenged me on those things when I stepped outside of not maybe uh, walked into spaces where I wasn't fully that. You see what mm-hmm. I'm saying? Um, and everything else became, a, a, you know, just a learning process. You see what I'm saying? As we continue to do marriage and do life, uh, everything, man, we just continue to learn. But I think for me, uh, asking the hard questions, mm. and I think really sitting down and creating an, uh, a safe and a safe emotional space for me. You see what I'm saying? I think that was the main thing for me to feel like, because it's important for men to feel like I can express something to you that might be uh, very tough for me to say. You know what I'm saying? And you to take it with no judgment, or you to lay it on a platform where it's just like you allow that thing to just be. Mm. without trying to change it or touch it or say this ain't right or this thing. So to me, those were like the signals for me to recognize like this is a great person that's, that has, uh, she cares about my well-being. It's less about who I am and what I aspire to be. You see what I'm saying? But more so about the man, less about the artist and all those other things. But it's like, what man do you want to be? Who? What type of life do you want to lead? So, uh, you know, all of those things, bro. And she was all, I seen so much in her and all of the things that she was, I wanted more for in my life. I wanted the vulnerability. I wanted more of that myself. I wanted that emotional intelligence. I wanted that, you know, for myself. So when she came in and she allowed that space for me, dog, it allowed me to tap into potentials that I didn't at that time know were possible. So that was the foundation. She came in like that. Mm -hmm. That was the foundation. We could say that was the floor. Yeah. But that was a great floor to start. Yeah, yeah. I'm Mm -hmm. thinking... Because marriage is hard, mm-hmm. super hard at times. Mm-hmm. In the worst of times, if you could think back on you had to say exactly what it was, how was I able to get through that? And I know we always say communication, but nah, it takes a little bit more than communication when we talk about the worst of times. Mm-hmm. Or do you think because she came in at that floor, it wasn't as bad as some of the old prior relationships maybe? Uh, some things got bad, you know what I'm saying? Some things got really rough. You know, There were rough patches in our relationship. Uh, but again, man, it's just like learning someone else's language. You see what mm. I'm saying? So it's a constant, you know, back and forth of just like, this is my language. This is how I respond to this particular thing. Why do you respond to that particular thing like that? Uh, but honestly, dog, a lot of it is getting it wrong in order to get it right. So the only reason we've gotten it right is because we've gotten it wrong so many times. You feel me? So, uh, you know, as it, you know what I'm saying? So to me, it's always the ebbs flows. It's always that balance. Uh, but for me, yes, it is in the communication of it, you know, and it's not the surface level of communication, but it's like the root of it, of like how you communicate, you see what I'm saying? And within that communication, what are you taking personally that maybe you shouldn't take personally? What Mm -hmm. things can we analyze? So then different forms of therapy have taught me how to break these things down, how to analyze them, how to search for them, how to recognize them in, within my body and being able to express these things and explain these things. So, uh, that's what that's the excruciating work that it's being, being together ten years. They say some people say like that seventh year is when you get over that hump. It might not be seven for you. Were you able to recognize the moment y'all got over a hump if it was the hump? Oh yeah, oh yeah, oh yeah. What 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 was that? Oh yeah, that hump man is uh, you know it where you feel like maybe this issue that we went through probably could have ended us, or like we were on the verge of saying some really some things that were very disrespectful. It could have been really harmful to one another. Uh, but you kind of, in that moment, you allow love to win. Like those are the most powerful moments for us. And those are like the hurdles because it's like, that's when you realize for a man too, of like, well, I can do this. Like I can win in this and I can be successful in it. You see what I'm saying? Mm. So I think it was those little things that I started to recognize. And I was like, oh, okay, okay. 
all right, I get this. I get this. I'm starting to get the flow of like, boom. So if I know that you operate like this, so it's really just learning the things that tick you or tick you what don't, how you move this and that. So like, I know what to say, what not to say, you know what I'm saying? What to engage, what not to engage. So um, it, it, that's, that's what it takes, man, in order to keep that shit just, but those moments, dog, those little moments where we felt like, man, whoo. Like, man, we probably ain't speak for like three days, four days or something like that, right? But we were able to come to center and say, you know what, I apologize. And mm-hmm. those are some of the most powerful moments because to me, we didn't allow the ego or like the disrespect or anything to get the best of us. And those you have to take is real wins for yourself. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? And then you deepen the level of communication of like, now we can talk about what went wrong. Well, what were you feeling? That's crazy because most of the time what I've learned is that most time when people are going through something, you're having an equal or opposite reaction or equal, equal opposite experience. That's what I've noticed with my wife. Like, and this is what helped me get better with it. Cause I'm like, if she, I might be thinking about something logically and feel like, Oh, I need to da 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 da. But she's thinking about it emotionally. Mm-hmm. So it's too different. You know what I'm saying? So, uh, that's, that's just what I learned in our journey, dog. And she's like, Oh, I just felt like I wasn't heard or listened to. And I'm like, damn, but I feel like you weren't listening and hearing me because I was trying to say da da da. But that's what it be. At the end of the day, it's like two people want to be heard, but nobody will bring themselves down enough to just say, like, this is what I was trying to say. I wasn't trying to hurt your feelings. You know, clarify. I'm not trying to hurt your feelings. And so yeah, that's different ways, man. I got methods. No, nah, I'm curious. Like, do you think that's a compatibility thing or that's something that you learn? Because sometimes you want to get there, mm-hmm. but because, like, we can't hear each other. Like, is it a compatibility thing or is that something that both of you got to be on a, like want to, want to learn about each other. Which uh, one is it? Both of you have to want to learn. I think in a relationship, it only stays successful if both of you stay curious. Mm. That's what I believe. Which means like c- curious in your own self development separately. Which and as you come together. So to me, we got you know our relationship, but we got a third entity of like our relationship that we have to protect. Like yeah, we have to. So we made a decision. It's all about your agreement, right? It's a contract if you think about it. So it's like, we agree that I will do my own spiritual work and my own self-development constantly in our relationship in order for it to work. And she agrees on the same point. So as she's healing, I'm healing. So when we come to, it's not like one person, one more healed and more advanced than the other. You see what I'm saying? It's not like that. It's like, uh, but you have to learn that, you know what I'm saying? It's a communication skill thing too, you Mm -hmm. know? So it's less about sometimes compatibility, but it's just about Clearly just about understanding. It's just a relationship thing of like, if you want the best for this person, then you will know what to say and what not to say, what to do and what not to do. And if you keep that curiosity of like, hmm, like I, I wonder if this will make them mad. I wonder if this, I hope this doesn't. Or just the curiosity of like, I wonder what they like this. I wonder what they care about this. I wonder how this makes them feel. I wonder if they da 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 That consideration there helps to prolong your relationship and keep your shit even past because you're constantly changing. Yo, you know last question, last question. So we're in a world full of like we can do what we want now and it's okay. Yes, sir. With that being said, you a man super successful, work out a lot, in shape. You can have your way if you want, especially coming from where we come from. That was the standard. Getting holes and all that. Right. It's clearly like relationships, marriage is clearly uh I don't want to say hard, but it can get tough. Mm -hmm. Why is that important to you to continue to be with one person? When you could just do your thing, be with all type of chicks and be that man, what we, what we found out, or who, who the hood, what our environment told us was the man. Mm-hmm. Why talk. is that important? Uh, and I probably, man, maybe because, you know, it's grateful too, I had it young, because I maybe got all it out of my system, maybe, you know what mm-hmm. I'm saying? I was wilding. You know, we had one in every city type timing, you know, so that's the type of toxicity that I was on at that time. So. Uh, now I've always made a vow to myself that if I got married, that I would be dedicated and honored that particular that one person. You know, uh, I grew up in a household where I seen marriage. My mom was a married woman, uh, all most all her all her life. You know what I'm saying? Um, so uh, I seen that representation, and I just think that's important for my son and my children. You know, uh, and just outside of that, man, I I you know I love it. I love doing life with a partner. Mm. I love doing life with her. I love uh, you know. Yeah, man, I love sitting back, you know what I'm saying, watching Game of Thrones or having a drink or having a deep intellectual conversation, listening to ca- classical music or just talking about the things that we want to create together, things that she want to bring into the world. You know, it's a really beautiful thing when you tap into the feminine side of things and not the idea of so much of what it's like to be masculine all the time. Mm. And that's really the beauty, dog, of what gained this balance for man. me, dog. You see what I'm saying? Right, there you go. Mm-hmm. You see what I'm saying? So that's, that's how I operate and what makes it different is that 
I honor the, uh, the, 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 the feminine aspect that's in me, uh, uh, you know, but also which is that emotional side, the vulnerability side, the humility side, that humble side. Um, but you know, also that masculine side, which is a dog and he'll provide and he gonna show up and he want hunted and like, you know what I'm saying? He gonna show love and like, so it's the, it's that balance dog. And to me, that's pure magic. It's light, it's darkness, dog. It's like one couldn't exist without the other. So as nature does, dog, that's how I feel about it, bro. Mm. I, lo- I love porn. Yo, I appreciate it, dog. This yeah. is great, man. Great talking to you, you man. You too, my bro. You my too, dog. Man. Hey, this is good shit. Why? Yo, I appreciate it for yes, real, sir. bro. I told you I had things. I ain't even, I had notes and shit. I ain't even, this yeah. was just natural, bro. Yeah. This is good, man. J-Hill, J-Hill Podcast. Well, before we get out of here, make sure you shout out to Procreative. Shout out to my guy, Kyron, uh, on the boards right now. Uh, the Deacon, you already know. J Hill, J Hill Podcast is a wrap. We out. <laughs>